Hey guys, a quick video today. So uh, the other day Meta released um, a new uh, leading model that they have, uh, Llama 3.1. Uh, and this one is actually quite amazing uh, in terms of that's the first open source and open weights model that uh, uh, is so big and so well performing in comparison to the commercial models. So let's look through that uh, quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, Zuckerberg and Meta are committing to uh, open distribution of the artificial intelligence, and that's what they're doing. I think they're doing that uh, exactly for the purpose of fragmenting the market and taking away uh, a massive uh, market share, uh, future market share from open AIs of this world and Googles, etc. I think they're doing that because uh, they need to catch up commercially and figure out how they, they will make money out of this. Uh, but uh, right now, what Zuck is doing is basically giving everyone one of the most powerful models, uh, uh, which makes it so much cheaper and easier to uh, run your own stuff on it and build your own models. Let's look into this one specifically. So, uh, well, first of all, it's got uh, a bigger window, 128K, which is uh, more or less standard in the modern day uh, LLMs. But uh, I think it's the first one for open source. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, and their leading model is Llama 3.1405 uh, billion parameters, 400 billion parameters. But they also released two smaller models, 8 billion and 70 billion, that are also performing better than the previous generation. And uh, the trick is that the, this model really is comparable to uh, GPT-4, 4.0, and Claude uh, 3.5 Sonnet as well. Uh, and uh, this is quite impressive. And if we look at the metrics, we see that uh, in a lot of the metrics that they're showing Llama of 400 billion is beating their competitors. Uh, there are some that it um, uh, is lagging behind, but if it is lag lagging behind, it's not by far. Uh, and uh, they also compare um, the 8 billion model with the, well, measurable competitors on, uh, on that side. And it's also doing pretty well as well as the similar uh, 70 uh, billion model, similar in the um, advantage over the other models. But I'm, more than that, I like this chart um, because it shows you a human evaluation. As you know, the, all those benchmarks and metrics that are used right now are pretty crappy uh, and not perfect, uh, put it this way. Uh, this one, I think, is a, a, a very good um, uh, metric to look at. It basically compares the human impression, uh, human evaluation of which model is better. And over here, they compare uh, Llama uh, 3.1, 405 with the GPT-4, with GPT-4.0, and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And uh, with an exception of, uh, I would say, GPT-4.0 over here, uh, they're really not behind. They're equal uh, in... Uh, measurements and in a comparison with 3.5 sonnet they're even winning uh, over that by a tiny percentage uh, but overall basically what it means is that what is that 19 plus 51 like 70 uh, something percent of people uh, could not vote for gpt4 uh, point uh, sorry gpt40 uh, and instead either you know uh, tied or uh, gave the win to the 4.5 billion model of Llama. Now there's some technical detail, details about the actual uh, implementation. I'm not gonna go through that, but what I am gonna go through is uh, a very interesting play that they're playing right now. Uh, so they're not just introducing a new model, they're introducing a whole suite of models and tools uh, also available in the open source that will be necessary by basically anyone who is building agentic applications or any kind of LLM based applications. So with, they're not just giving, for example, the, again, the basic LLM, they're also giving this guard model over here, Llama guard three, uh, which is the model that, um, basically validates, uh, the, uh, injections from the prompts. Uh, and uh, this is a big problem for everyone, uh, and uh, you know they're dealing with that with that in a different in different ways. But uh, what Meta is doing, they're creating uh, their own standard in a way. They're creating what they call Llama Stack. I think we're going to hear a lot more about this Llama Stack thing uh, in the coming future. Uh, 
and if we open up and read uh, a little more in terms of the reference systems and the other systems that they put in there, it's more than just the guard. There's a bunch of other stuff. And it seems like their uh, focus uh, is in, you know, it seems like Zach said so. Um, uh, their focus is in actually enable uh, a very easy creation uh, of the new models f specific for certain purposes uh, by either fine tuning llamas or by using it to generate synthetic data to uh, prepare the data sets for some very specific models. So uh, again, their bet is to simplify this process as much as possible for developers so that developers can take it and build this unique uh, LLMs that are fit well to a specific purpose. Uh, what else over here? Oh yeah, let's go back to this uh, whole ecosystem that they're uh, building for us. So the stuff that they put in is the uh, real-time and batch interfaces, supervised fine-tuning, which actually is not an easy thing to do with any of the commercially available uh, models, at least right now. Evaluation of the model, pre-training, uh, and interestingly, RAG as well, uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, what it actually means for me, it means that most probably RAG is becoming commoditized. Uh, and it seems like a rug is going to be provided by the partner solutions. Uh, so basically like hosting companies and guys who are going to be running all of that. Uh, and it's not going to be something that developers would have to build from the very beginning. They, of course, give function calling because, you know, you, you, you cannot do anything with that and synthetic data generation. So basically what you get, maybe not everything right now, but over time, what you get is this whole uh, ecosystem of the tools, models, and products that you can just take and use it entirely to build your whatever agentic system you want to build. I think this is quite an uh, impressive move by uh, Meta. Uh, I am not sure about Zach's approach to handle to handling uh, artificial intelligence in terms of making it fully open. Uh, there's two opinions right now. Basically, there's an opinion of the uh, uh, people who want to control the AI as much as possible and screw uh, the uh, loose ends everywhere to make sure that it doesn't end up in their own hands. And the second approach is uh, what Zuck is doing is making it uh, accessible and available to everyone easily. And by that, debugging it as much as possible and uh, making sure that those use cases, harmful use cases, are um, removed from the artificial intelligence systems. I haven't made my mind which one is better so far, uh, but uh, yeah, we are observing. Yeah, I hope it was uh, useful for you. Thank you. Cheers.